بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف uh, I am happy that uh, I have Tawfiq to meet you another time and the topic for our discussion today is time management and this is a very very important topic and the reason I also uh, chose this among uh, your proposed t uh, topics was because uh, it was somehow uh, a kind of maybe urgent topic and also something that I myself am also very much uh, thinking about it and I am not claiming or anything uh, even close to claiming that I am a good p uh, manager of my time uh, just since I am stag struggling myself and I am always thinking about how to use my time I thought it would be good inshallah to discuss this topic and benefit from some of personal experiences but also from some of the good uh, points which are there uh, presented by other people uh, I very much uh, think it would be good to have this discussion a kind of workshop so that we can go a step by a step uh, now we don't have workshop but I thought maybe I present this discussion at least uh, in two parts one part this week and request you to think about it and uh, see how much they apply to you uh, if we mention some issues some problems uh, maybe you can check whether you have those problems or not how do you deal with them and then in the next session inshallah about how to um, uh, prioritize things and uh, allocate time etc so we are not able to finish the discussion today also here i am not going to mention what uh, i have uh, mentioned in some other lectures so if you want to have a more comprehensive discussion uh, there are some lectures about for example how to plan our day and uh, how to use our time etc so those are there uh, to begin with, first, very quickly, I mention a hadith that you are all familiar with. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam is quoted as saying, اغتنموا الفرس فإنها تمر مر الصحاب When there are opportunities, you should grab them because they pass very quickly like clouds clouds pass very quickly and even sometimes you don't notice very quietly opportunities are like this sometimes you think uh, still the time is there opportunity is there but opportunity already has finished has gone so we have to grab opportunities uh, we have another hadith that Ma'asum says uh, what has expired has gone ma fata mada wa ma yati ka fa'ain and future has not yet come where is future? it's not yet here so the past has gone the future has not come so grab the opportunity between two Adams, two non-existent things, Mazi and Mustaqbal. 
the past is not with us anymore. The future is not there anymore, any uh, 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 still up to now. Not yet it's with us. So we have only the present. So time is very, very important and we have to use it. And we have lots of things about life, about youths in Islam that make it very clear that we have to appreciate time. Even the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beginning of some surahs of Quran, several chapters of Quran, he refers to portions of time, uh, you know, to Fajr, to Layl, to Asr. These are very important. Now, what I want to mention is that there is a reality that unfortunately uh, we sometimes neglect, although we know, but we neglect. And that is the fact that time is not reversible and it's not replaceable. Don't say, for example, today is Sunday, there will be other Sundays to come. Or this month is May, there will be other Mays to come. First of all, there is no guarantee. But even if they come, this one is not going to be repeated. You cannot bring it back. And you cannot replace it, even if you make lots of efforts, if you spend money. You cannot replace the time which is missed or wasted in any method, any way. So every time is unique and is only for, uh, for us and with us once. You cannot bring it back, you cannot re undo it, redo it, re re revise it. Just we have one opportunity. So this means that we have to be very careful and alert. Especially, I think for us today, uh, maybe time is even more important than before. In the past, uh, uh, it was like a race with a slow pace. When the pace is slow, you have more time. But when the race is with very high speed, even if you miss few seconds, you remain behind. You will lose. In few seconds, you have to make decisions when the race is with very fast speed. Today, individuals, communities, nations, all are in a very fast race. And if we don't come along with time, we don't act properly uh, with our time and opportunities, either we will be remaining behind or we will even be destroyed and defeated. Maybe not physically always, but sometimes physically, sometimes our ideology, our identity, our theology, our tradition, our heritage, if we don't make proper decisions quickly, can be damaged. So, this is a great uh, blessing of Allah that we have to be very careful, especially today. And if, on the other hand, we make good use of our time and we are on the right track because it is a uh, you know, very fast race, you can quickly go forward. Now, Alhamdulillah, we have people that in very young age, mashallah, they have achieved a lot. The amount of even, for example, education that they have, experiences they have, community work that they have, their understanding of you know politics. Sometimes uh, young people in our age, mashallah, they know a lot. They have lots of experiences, lots of good characteristics because they were happy uh, to uh, get advice from other people, benefit from wisdom of people. They were also in good uh, environment so they could quickly uh, make progress. I would like to discuss today some of the problems that 
we have about our time and you can say some of the problems that uh, lead to waste of our time uh, these problems are sometimes internal sometimes external uh, I found this uh, list useful and we will try to see whether we uh, you know can with your suggestions add to this list or not so please think about it how much it is relevant to you and whether there are other things that you think can create problem with our uh, uh, usage of time and time management so with respect to internal issues one of the things that very much harms us is laziness laziness sometimes it's physical sometimes it is more psychological sometimes there's no nothing wrong in our body it's not that our body it's just lack of determination and sometimes uh, when we are not uh, active for some time then they, we get used to being lazy inactive passive and this is very destructive sometimes people may get uh, even you know into uh, more extreme cases of mental problems we need to be active one of the things that we find in the lives of uh, our great ulama and also even people who have been successful in uh, secular sciences etc is that they were very active uh, at the same time that they had you know social responsibilities family response etc but they were very active they were not wasting their time recently uh, someone was talking about one of our great Maharaja who passed away it actually was his son was saying that he didn't waste any of his time I have heard this about many other great scholars that their family members said they would never you know sit somewhere doing nothing they are always doing something maybe it's tafakkur, maybe contemplation, maybe zikr, maybe visiting uh, kinship, maybe buying something, cleaning, washing, I don't know, gardening. But they don't waste their time. They do something, they have a plan for their time. So one of the problems is laziness. And something also close to it is uh, a kind of bad habit or bad attitude maybe it's more than habit that some people say let it go let it happen uh, they don't mind that much about things they are very relaxed you know sometimes you are relaxed because you have tranquility <laughs> that is good those who have tranquility they are active they are not passive Sometimes people are f relaxed in a bad way, in a negative way, in the sense that they don't bother. For example, a student who is relaxed in the sense that whether he gets A or B or C or D or E or F, he doesn't bother about it. Whether even he is dismissed from the school, he doesn't. This type of uh, being relaxed and this type of being uh, passive is not good yes if you are free from a stress that's good if you are tranquil it's good if you are uh, patient persistent these are great but to be passively relaxed this is not good it's very close to being lazy another problem is postponing sometimes I wait till the time comes this is good this is not to postpone this means the time has not yet come 
And if you have studied lectures on practical wisdom, we have said that one aspect of wisdom is to recognize what is the proper and appropriate time for doing anything. Everything has a proper time. If you do it earlier, it's a problem. If you do it later, it's a problem. You have to do it in its appropriate time. In Arabic, we say al umur marhunatun ba'uqata. Every affair has a time that is suitable for it and relies on their on its time. Uh, but if the time has come, I shouldn't postpone because maybe then the time will be finished. Or I want to say something more. Inshallah, next week uh, or next time we will talk about it also. Maybe sometimes even the time is extended. So it's not that the time will be over. But leave it for the last portion of the available time is also a problem. So sometimes I have to do something this week. I don't do it this week and next week will be too late. Okay, this is a problem. Sometimes I have to do it this week. And I say, okay, I will do it this week, but at the very end, this is also a problem. Because maybe something happens last minute that you cannot do it. Or maybe then you have to rush, you lose con you know, quality. And also for one week you are busy with this. If something is important, let's do it in the beginning of its time. You know, we say we should say our salat not only in its prescribed time, but also at the beginning of it, fi awwal al waqt, on time. This can be a lesson for any other important things that do it the first. For example, uh, I have to, I don't know, to, for example, go to doctor f for my tooth. I have to go to optometrist for my glasses. Uh, I have time to go today, tomorrow, for example, within a week. Uh, I postpone it, postpone it today, then watch TV, you know, go do other things which are not necessary. Why? Because maybe deep inside me I am worried about this, you know, I have some stress or whatever. But this is anyway going to happen. And just uh, keeping one week, you know, thinking and, you know, going through stress and worries is not good. Let's do it the first day not first day, second day, why we should delay? This is one of the problems that takes our time and energy. I heard someone uh, uh, you know, saying something nice. He said, for example, if I receive uh, some bills that I have to pay. So when I open the letter envelope and I see that there is a bill, I have to pay electricity bill, for example. I pay it immediately. If the time has not come, for example, I put the check, uh, the name on the check, make it ready, and put the check next to the letter, and just leave it aside ready for the time to come to post it. In this way, I don't need to think about it. I don't need to go back again and find this letter and read it. And also, I will not forget it. So it's very good if we can do everything which is important, not only in its time, but also in the beginning of its time, if it is important thing, and we don't have overriding tasks and responsibilities. Another thing which is bad is to do things in rush. 
maybe you say, oh, this will create more time if we do quickly. Yes, but sometimes to do things quickly, actually, in the long term would damage more our time. Don't delay. Don't take too much time. If something needs half an hour, okay, do it in half an hour. Don't be perfectionist. Don't doubt yourself. Don't go back and forth. But don't also rush. If we don't do things properly, then there is a chance that again we have to spend time on this. So do things properly, not in rush. Other thing is that we should not let things exhaust us. Sometimes for different reasons. For example, because we are not realistic, we are too ambitious, or sometimes we have an ideal which is good, but we are too perfectionist in its performance. Anyway, we took too much uh, stress, undertake a great task, and then it becomes exhausting. This is also not good. You have to be fair with yourself. It's very good to be a little bit pushing ourselves, but not too much. If you put too much pressure on yourself, then maybe you break down physically or mentally. Yes. A little bit pushing is good. Hadith says one of the characteristics of Mu'min is Badanuhu min hufi ta'ab wa nasu min hufi raha. A Mu'min is the one that whose body is really worked by him, worked out. Means is uh, used, is tired. And people are comfortable with him or her. Means he or she undertakes his or her task, works hard, but doesn't become burden on others. Even tries to help other people. So to be active, to put a little pressure on yourself. A little, I mean, not to the extent that it makes you ill, but something manageable, it's good. So moment should be more active than non moment But if it goes out of limit, for example, one of the things, you know, when we enter Tose, some experienced people kept telling us is, be careful about your health because some Talabe, for example, are so much interested in learning that they don't look after their food, their diet, their health, then they develop headache, uh, stomach pain, they become ill, they cannot continue. And there were cases that because of working too hard, they were not even able to continue their talabiki. Or they couldn't uh, study properly. So we should not make too much pressure, put too much pressure on ourselves. We have to be fair, even with our health, with our body, with our soul but active of course another problem is that sometimes we are too much uh, nosy and curious the cur curiosity is good but if it is too much is nosiness is not good uh, not necessarily in the lives of people, even in general things. I want to know everything. I want to hear every news. I want to, you know, read every newspaper, you know, check every website, you know, see everyone's, you know, uh, page on Facebook or I don't know, stuff, etc. Uh, with the limited time and with the uh, limited attention that we can have, we have to be very economical. So we should not be uh, letting our curiosity take too much time. And not only they take time, but also after that, they would drain your energy, your attention. So you have to be very careful. You would never really use your time properly either, unless you think that 
when you spend time is more important than spending money. Yeah. If you, for example, are on internet and websites or you know pages on Facebook, Insta, they charge you. Even if they say, for example, we charge you uh, fifty cent, for example, <laughs> one dollar every hour. You will think twice. You will think three times before you watch them. But if they don't charge you, but you are being charged your time. You have to be more careful. Unfortunately, with time, we are very generous. Uh, with our money, we are more careful. So if you want to really appreciate your time, you have to imagine that um, how much is the value of time? It's a very good, I think, point. For example, for you, what is the value of every hour of your time? You have to find out. For me, how much is the value of every hour of my time? Uh, once I was talking to some of my family members, you know, uh, younger ones, and um, I told them about learning another language. I said, you know, I very much love learning another language, uh, but I have to see whether it is worth spending lots of time for me to learn another language and I said you are young your time is silver please listen carefully and uh, don't get me wrong I said for youngsters life is still mashallah is there normally uh, and their time is silver but when you reach my time, my time is gold, it's not silver. <laughs> because I have limited amount of time, you have more. I have limited amount of time, plus I have spent decades on reaching this point. So there were things that if I had done 30 years ago was okay, was reasonable. If as a young Taliban I had uh, spent, you know, lots of time on learning English or, you know, Arabic conversation, okay, at that time was okay. But if today I want to learn another language, I have to see compared to what I have to give, is it worth or not? Because I have very limited time and also one hour of my time now is a result of many, many years I have reached this point. I have to use it more efficiently. I don't know, do you get my point or not? It's not that I am saying I am important. I'm saying that for someone in middle age or later stage of life, uh, they have to have very good reason for uh, spending their time because they have limited time. Plus, they have uh, spent so much of time, experience, education, working, family, community, so one hour of us has to be used much better than the same person 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So this is also something that we have to be very careful about our time and uh, how to uh, control our attention, our curiosity, etc. cetera. Uh, sometimes also, there is something that drains us and damages our time and doesn't let us be very, uh, you know, good with uh, time management, and that is despair. Despair, or thinking that problems are too big. This is also a big issue. If someone manages to put in my mind despair, hopelessness, uh, and to think that the world is full of darkness and full of problems, the world is, you know, controlled by bad people, you know, etc. Again, I become passive and I let my time be wasted because I think I cannot bring any change. We are too little. Everything is already decided by, you know, big people. So this is also bad. Another thing that takes too much of our time is 
uh, uh, speaking and uh, meetings and conversations which are not useful. Talking is very good, but Hadith says talking if talking is silver, silence is gold. So, or another hadith very beautifully says, a mu'min, as long as he is silent, is registered as muhsan. But when he talks, he is either muhsan or musi. Means as long as you are silent, you are a benefactor, you are doing ihsan. When you speak, then depending on what you said, you can be muhsan or musi. This doesn't mean that you can always choose to be silent, but relatively, the chance of being silent and good is more than the chance of uh, speaking and being good. Although sometimes we have to speak, sometimes we must uh, speak, but j relatively uh, silence is more safe than uh, speaking. And at least uh, speaking takes lots of time. Another thing that is a problem is not to know our talents, our potentials, not to know what difference I can bring to myself and other people. Again, this leads to not being careful about my time. So these are some factors. Maybe we can add to this. You can think also and let me know, inshallah. These are internal ones. Some of the things which are more external, of course, we talked about uh, speaking and meetings. This can be uh, sometimes also external like meetings, but uh, it has both sides. Some of the external ones, for example, uh, about uh, trying to be kind and then losing balance. Sometimes we quickly promise without checking whether this is a priority or not, whether I have to do it or maybe someone else can do it better. Maybe I have more important tasks. It's very good to help. It's very good to commit yourself to people and say, okay, I promise to do this for you. It's, it's good, but it's not necessary. So you shouldn't say, I will do this for you, and then later think about it and say, oh, I shouldn't have said this. So let's uh, leave it and he, he will forget, for example. Or if he asks me again, I will do it. Otherwise, I will leave it. When we promise, we should keep our promise. So one of the arts that we have to learn is when to say no, when to say yes. If you always say no, it's a problem. It means you are selfish. You don't want to help anyone. If you always say yes, this is also a problem. It means you are not realistic. How can you say yes to every suggestion, every request? You have to have your plans. So you have to learn, some people say you have to learn when to say no. I say no. Maybe it's better to say you have to learn when to say yes or no. Don't accept quickly, don't reject quickly. Think really what is manageable, what is priority, what Allah expects from you to do. Too much socializing spending time in person or online with friends uh, or non-friends, you know, strangers, etc., family members, any person, of course, can be more or less uh, or better or you know, worse, but anything has to have a measure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything with measure. Everything has a measure. Not to speak, not to meet, not to socialize at all is bad. Do it too much is also bad.
Another thing which is very harmful is uh, being not in control of our time, presence uh, on social media, internet, etc. This can create lots of wastage of time, at least. We have to be very careful. And one of my challenges is this also, how to find a way that you can uh, be connected to your contacts, your friends, that they are very dear to you, uh, your work contacts, that which are very dear to you, but at the same time to be in control of your time. You know, imagine if someone's house was, for example, uh, next to the uh, central place in the city. Suppose there was a small village or a small town and there were shops etc all in the central place. And other also people from villages etc also go there. If your house was there everyone was knocking your door. Then you would not able to concentrate on anything. This family, this friend, this relative, this visitor, this, I don't know, person is recommended by someone else. If they keep knocking your door, you cannot focus on anything. Sometimes people late come, for example, sometimes people who live in holy cities, someone, for example, if it is in Mashhad, for example, or Karbala. <laughs> uh, so sometimes they may have this issue that many visitors may unexpectedly go. Sometimes, maybe some people don't go unexpectedly, but anyway, it can happen. Certainly some ulama are like this, some, you know, maraj, always people are knocking their door. It's very difficult. Now with internet and different time zones, it's even more difficult because yes, they don't come to physically knocking your door, but day and night, uh, they send messages. Maybe it's their daytime, it's your night. Or sometimes even it's their night, they send. Anyway, uh, they, they are not guilty because they may think that you answer in the right time. Uh, but you have to have a plan for yourself. If we are sending messages, it's better to be careful. But if people send, they may think that we are already ourselves careful. So we have to have a plan when to answer and how to answer. Inshallah, next session, if we, uh, we have tawfiq, I want to talk about how to prioritize important things or less important things and uh, things which are you know urgent or not. Inshallah, we'll talk about it uh, next. Another thing which uh, can also cause problem, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, applicable to you or not, but for example, for us as Talab was very applicable. Too much of travels and too much of holidays can be a problem. For example, you know, we were very concerned that in the Hose, Okay, we have, f for example, uh, most of the public lessons are for five days, Saturday to Wednesday. In our uh, school or many uh, schools, they have also Thursdays till Zuhur. But then we were not happy that Thursday afternoon and Friday we don't have lectures. Then we have religious holidays, we have summer holidays. So we were very concerned and we were always trying to have some plan for our study during holidays as well. So sometimes we used to go to a place which is cooler than Qom, to Mashhad or other places, so that we can study, we take lessons. Sometimes we were taking books with us, you know, to read. Sometimes we take, you know, recorded. At that time was cassettes, uh, uh, audio cassettes to listen. So, if we are not careful, too much of holidays, 
So any subject that you like, if you just uh, study as much as university wants or you know, as much as you know, Jose wants would not be enough. Or if you travel unnecessarily too much, uh, spend too much time on transportation, etc., these are also causing wastage of time and also sometimes some physical and mental tiredness. It's very important to be regular in your uh, work, allow for some holidays, but not too much. Not you know. Uh, it is said that uh, one Taleb had uh, studied several years. In the past, you know, he had gone to Hosea outside Iran, one of the famous Hosas. Uh, of course, the problem was not Hosea; the problem was him. So when he went back to his town, people asked him questions. He didn't know. So <laughs> they asked him. Uh, why you know you don't know why you didn't learn he said because I was from Iran and you know Thursday Friday for us in Iran are holidays so in my mind I was not able to study Thursdays and Fridays because you know weekends over there Saturday Sundays were holidays and weekends so we had no classes and then between Sunday and Thursday was just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and these are Beino Tati. <laughs> Sometimes when you have two holidays, before two holidays, then also it's like the atmosphere for a holiday. You cannot work seriously. So he was saying that, so between these two holidays also I had Beino Tati line. So I never had time to study. <laughs> so if you are not careful, sometimes this happens, that we waste too much of our time. But also you have to remember, this is my, I just remember this point, I think I should mention it, my last point. Sometimes you are good in using your time in certain things and not in other things. Don't let this deceive you think you are always good for example there are people that in what they love they are very good for example they there is a student in university uh, studying medicine or maths they are very good with this they study they are active but when it comes for example to their Islamic studies they are not good in time management. They say we don't have time. A good person with time should be good in everything, not in just few issues. Some people are very good with their business, very organized, take notes of everything. They do everything for success in their business. But when it comes to family life, they have no plan. Nothing. This is also an issue. So you shouldn't think if you are good in one area, then this is enough. You have to be careful about your time in every aspect. Uh, okay, I stop here, inshallah. Uh, share with me your ideas, your thoughts. And then if Allah permits and if you are interested, we can have a second session to say how to plan and prioritize inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin uh, thank you so much for this insightful lecture um inshallah all of us have been able to take something beneficial from it sure. so we're gonna start the q a so for anyone who's on the call, please feel free to um, raise your hand to ask a question or type it in the chat. Um, we've also sent out a link to a survey if you'd like to ask your question anonymously. And so to start, we've actually had some people who have already submitted questions. So if you don't mind, could sure. start with those. Yes. So and also, is, as I said, please also after this meeting uh, discuss have mubahisa about what was said and see what can be added or replaced you know and what is applicable to you what you find it not relevant so so that inshallah we can better absorb and also build uh, inshallah upon this
So the first question we have is that in today's society, our studies and our career tends to be the top priority. Um, it's encouraged to always be working on those things so that we can't prioritize anything else. Everything becomes second to this, even family and spirituality. How can we change this mentality in ourselves? Yeah, I think uh, it's a very important question. And inshallah, when we talk about it ne uh, next session, how to prioritize and how to choose those things which are more important or less important, we can discuss this. But basically, do not let uh, social norms or social expectations decide for you. Because everyone expects from you to just, for example, focus on your uh, study or, you know, your work, say, okay, that's for me the priority. Sometime for a, a girl, also maybe, for example, marriage becomes a priority. Unfortunately, some people marry too early. I don't want to say, you know, you have to marry, you know, uh, as early as possible always. But unfortunately, some people also delay their marriage. They think their priority is to uh, study and work and, you know, make uh, some experience and then marry. Uh, but it's not always like this. Sometimes your priority is when a, there is a good uh, proposal to marry. It's more important sometimes than your work or a study. Sometimes, not always, depending. So I'm saying you have to be careful. Not that after some time you open your eyes and you would see that, okay, now you have uh, best degrees and, you know, good job. You have even your own apartment, but you didn't act wisely with respect to, for example, family responsibilities, etc. I'm saying sometimes, I'm not saying always this is the case. But anyway, you have to find out what are your priorities Islamically uh, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc. If you are 100% sure after mashwara, thinking, dua, that your responsibility just to study, okay, study as long as possible. Your uh, responsibility to work, okay. But you have to be careful. You have to do this with open eyes, with mashwara, etc. Not that for some time you only think about this and then when you realize the time is past. Or some or people who have children, for example. Sometimes, you know, they spend all their time on making money. And they are not after dunya. You know, some of the people I have seen, they were not after dunya. But they say, you know, I want to send my child to grammar school, you know, to good university, etc. So I work day and night to save money for my children and my family. His intention is not you know, for dunya, he's not selfish, he's not greedy. But uh, still, this is wrong. Because your children need you more than money. If they don't see you and day and night you are working in your shop or etc. And, you know, your children uh, get used to life without you. Then you have money, but the children have no interest in you. So we have to be very careful about these things. Thank you, Sister Fatima, if you'd like to ask your question. Yes. Uh, Sheikh, so, uh, Sheikh, thank you so much for this lecture. You're welcome. Uh, I look forward to the, the follow-up session, inshallah. Inshallah. inshallah uh, I was just wondering if you could, uh, I have two questions. Could you elaborate on the last point that you made on the internal issue? You said not knowing uh, my talents or my potentials. So what did you mean by that exactly? Uh, so... For the internal ones, you mean? Yes. Yeah. So for internal ones, sometimes because I don't know my talents, my potentials, then I think I cannot do anything and I let my time be wasted. Or I spend too much time on something that is not m my best talent. You know? So you have to, it's like investment. You have to invest your time where it's more productive. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, my other question was on on the external. Yes. You said, uh, you know, having the balance, you said you can't say yes to everything and you can't say no to everything. Yes. And we have to uh, learn when to say either yes or when to say no. Yes. Um, how, how do we differentiate in or discern when something's coming to us because Allah wants us to do that? Like, how do we, you know, sometimes, yeah. You know, it's like we say that sometimes um, Allah will use you as a means, let's say, to respond to somebody's dua or, you know, Allah is helping somebody through you or, or something like, how do we know for sure this is something Allah wants me to do or this is just something that it just came and, yes, does it make question make sense? Yeah. Uh, you know, if someone asks me for something, first, I have to check whether this is good thing or not. For sure, uh, uh, when it comes from a uh, mu'min or mu'min brother, sister, uh, it shouldn't be a problem, but it's better let's say, to check. Is it good or not? Second, what this would cost you if you are going to do it? Are you able to just do this without losing uh, any other thing, without, you know, uh, uh, being in need of uh, stopping any other thing? Or you just can, with a little uh, more effort, manage to do this without losing anything. If you can manage it without losing anything, of course, if it's a good thing, and you can manage it, it's very good to accept and help people Islamically. Alhamdulillah, we have this habit that we want to help. But if you have to then lose something, stop something, cancel something, then you have to prioritize. You have to see which one is wiser. Sometimes people are so much attached to their own things that they don't want to help even the community work, nothing they want to help. They are just thinking about their own issues. No. But also, you should not be uh, too much generous with your time. Maybe Allah wants you to take care of some of your other tasks. So the main thing is to see what is wise decision. What does Allah want from me? Whether Allah wants from me to spend this time on this project or that project, on myself, on my family, on community, which community, which group. So never accept something uh, without thinking about these issues. And never reject something without thinking about these issues. And when we learn when to say yes or no, I think that's the sign of maturity and wisdom to learn this. And sometimes, unfortunately, what happens, uh, some people accept things uh, just out of politeness, uh, but they really don't want to do this and they cannot even make the niya of <laughs> doing this for the sake of Allah, for example. Just, they do something just because to police people or not to displease people or sometimes I have seen some this happens to Taliban sometimes and maybe also in, in this politics also and social life maybe happens that for example if something which is very good if Mr. A or Sister A tells me I don't do it if someone who has power says or someone who has influence says, I will do it. Yes, if for example, a spiritual person, if my teacher tells me, I give a priority to my teacher. But sometimes, no, it's not a matter of uh, a spirituality or teacher, etc. It's a matter of this person is powerful. This person is influential. This person has money. This person is famous. Uh, we shouldn't let these considerations affect our decision. We should see what is, after all these things, what is more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. But uh, uh, I also should say something that 
uh, maybe when I said, you know, if they ask something and I cannot, uh, I would not need to cancel anything, I will do it. Sometimes people who have some rights upon us ask for something. For example, your father, your mother, uh, your teacher, your, I don't know, elder brother, sister, after, of course, some degree, they are not the same as parents. So there are people who have rights upon us, ask for something. Here, uh, sometimes we need to, if it's not going to make a big problem, we need to uh, say yes. Uh, not always, but uh, so just the fact that they have some rights upon us uh, is a factor. I'm not saying it's the only factor, but sometimes you have to consider this also. So, for example, maybe if your classmate says something, you don't accept because you have other things to do. But if your s elder sister says or if your mother says, it's different, even if the same thing. Uh, because these people have also some rights upon us. But not that everything that they say, you know, you must accept. <laughs> Sometimes it's not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are many factors to understand, to consider in order to understand. Um, thank you. We have a few more questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, someone says that, is time an amana from Allah? I know that people will regret wasting their time on earth after they die, mm. but will Allah hold us accountable for wasting it? Yes. Uh, we are going to be asked about time also. Uh, actually, there is a hadith which says, لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل أن أربع uh, You will not move unless you will be asked about four things. One of them is an Shababhi fi ma'abla and another is wa an umrihi fi ma'afna. How did you spend your life and also additionally how did you spend uh, your youth? Shabab. So it's so important that the time of you know being young is additionally asked. Thank you. We have a few You're more. Um, how do you build this determination that you can resist wasting time? Sometimes we justify for ourselves that we need a break, but how much rest time do we actually need? Yeah, inshallah, I think we can talk about this next week, next session. This is uh, coming for the next uh, part how we should do. The, uh, this uh, week we talked about significance of time and problems. Next session, inshallah, we'll talk about what we should do actively to plan and manage our time. But please uh, keep this question and remind me 